Hi, Jason Tormach. Thanks for coming to check out our video. Today we're gonna to talk about indicating in a hole. So when would you wanna indicate in a hole? It's probably the most accurate method for finding center of a bore. Um, I always go to this method when I'm in repairing a part, if I have an existing bore that I need to oversize a little bit or fix, make it a little deeper, you know, revision change or something on a part, you need to make a modification. Um, or if I just really need to accurately locate a feature relative to the bore, then I will always pull out the indicator and sweep it in so that I know I have it exactly on center. One of the nice things about indicating versus using like a Heimer or an edge finder or even a touch probe to find the bore is you can account for the entire bore itself while you're setting your zero. So if you have a hole that's been damaged, you know, if your repairing opponent has been damaged, um, or the hole's just a little bit out of round from a manufacturing process, while you're sweeping that in, you can see the indicator motion and you can account for that. So it allows you to kind of almost best fit the zero of your machine and the origin of your machine to the part itself. So it really allows you just to dial them in and get it right where you need it to make the part work out. So let's look at some of the tools and stuff that we can use to do this. There's a whole different assortment, lots of varieties on indicator holders and techniques and stuff, but this, the process for every one of these is pretty much exactly the same. We're gonna bring the indicator over the top of the hole, we're gonna eyeball it to make it sweep about the right size and look like it's on center, and then we're gonna put the indicator inside the bore, and we're gonna adjust the machine until it's on center. So let's look through a couple of our different tools here that we have laid out, just for examples. So this is a coaxial indicator. So these are really nice. I, I like using these, they're kind of an expensive tool, so not everybody's gonna have one of these in their toolbox, but if you do have one, they're a very fast way to, to find center on a bore. Um, as you can see, when you rotate the tool holder, the body of the indicator stays stationary. So this is nice because then you can sweep the indicator needle around the bore and you can always see the gauge face on the indicator. So as you go around, you don't have to get a mirror out or stick your head behind the machine to see where the indicator is reading. Um, you have an anti-rotation stick here that you just put a, up against a part. A lot of times we'll just use a magnetic base or something just stuck in the machine just to stop the rotation and then we'll just sweep the tool around and find center with that. Another tool we have is, I've never actually seen these for sale anywhere. This is something that we made in trade schools. I've seen a few guys have these in their toolboxes where you make them in trade school. Um, but this is a indicator holder. You can see it has the dovetail to, ex you know, to mount the indicators in. So you can mount, you know, this is an inter-rapid style indicator. Um, it also has um, this really nice fine adjust mechanism on it. So this is a real fine pitch thread. So as you're dialing in your bore, you can adjust the wheel here and it'll move the indicator in and out. So it's just, I really enjoy using these when I've used them. I made one in tech school um, and I always really enjoyed using it. It's just a nice tool to have. Um, some indicators will come with a little indicator arm. So this you can see has that dovetail on it as well. As we tighten this up, it pushes this little brass pin out and then clamps on that dovetail and then we can adjust this arm to wherever we would need it to get our indicator position. This is called an Indicol. This is a pretty standard one you'll see. We also made these in tech school and you can buy these from a various different sources. These are kind of made, you know, this is kind of comes back to the Bridgeport days and stuff where you'd clamp this to the spindle nose. I always found these a little more difficult to use on CNC machines because the spindle noses are so much larger. We always had to put a tool holder in to clamp this to a tool holder or something. But if you have one of these, they're definitely a, still a great tool. They have two adjustable arms. They have a dovetail option you can hold and they also have a, a bore that you can clamp on the stem of the indicator depending on what style you have. This is just a magnetic base. This is a little Noga magnetic base. Um, so we can just clip this right to the spindle nose. And, you know, with the magnetic, we can just stick it to the spindle nose and then we can just adjust the arm into position so that as we rotate the spindle, we can um, you know, work it on center. Some of these systems work better for different scenarios. You know, something like this, if you're sweeping in like a six inch diameter bore, you know, obviously a little tool like this won't, won't help you very much. You know, if we go to a longer, longer arm, it's gonna work really nice for the large diameter bores. But if we get down to a really small diameter bore, now we kind of have to manipulate this around to get it back on center. Another real common way that I've done a lot in life is you just grab a drill chuck and you just put the indicator in a drill chuck. So if you have a smaller diameters, 
you can just real quickly and easily get one set up to uh, sweep it in on zero as well. All right, so we've got a, one of the indicator arms loaded up in the machine here. And as you can see, as we swing it around, it's just you know, right around the center of the spindle. So I always kind of start in my X direction. When you're finding center of a circle, you really only need to find three points, and that defines the circle. So I always find X, work in the front side of Y, and then when I'm done with those three points, I'll check the back side, because when you're indicating a hole, it's a little difficult and frustrating to have to stick your head behind the machine, behind the indicator all the time, or have to use a mirror to figure out where you're at. So I always just work the three points in and then verify my fourth point once I'm done. So I'm just going to position this thing a little bit here to make it easy to read. Anytime you're using an indicator, you want to try to keep the indicator needle as parallel with the surface you're indicating. The kind of the rule of thumb is about a 12 degree angle for an accurate measurement. So always just try to keep that indicator needle nice and parallel with that surface. You don't want to keep you know, the indicator pointed like this and try to sweep that bore. You want to keep that needle nice and straight. So we'll bring this down. And this is a tense indicator, so this one doesn't have a lot of travel in it, so we really got to get it pretty close on its own before we can see it. So we're touching on Y, but we're not touching on X, so I'm going to go ahead and jog the machine off the needle in Y. You see we're still not touching anywhere. We're almost touching on the right side, and we're visually off on the left, so go ahead and jog the machine over. When I do this at first, I just use the rough jog. So I'm just using the, the outer wheel on the jog shuttle. Um, as we get this dialed in, I'll switch to incremental jog mode and we'll move it, you know, like a tenth at a time. And then we're like, with this style indicator, as we get close, we can use the fine adjustment. So we just hang on the tool and we can turn the collar and we can dry that indicator in and out as we need to. So I'll put just a little preload on it. So we lose our preload going to the left. We lose it going to the right. So we need to move it off a Y a little bit. And when you're doing this and you're going to switch to jog mode, kind of a quick little tip to prolong your indicator life is verify what increment you're going to jog in. If you go to move this and you expect it to move a thou or a tenth and it moves a hundred thou, you're going to break your indicator. So always verify um, your increment that you're sitting in before you start jogging. You can see we got it pretty close. You know, as I mentioned, this is a tense indicator, so these are real, you know, these are real accurate measurement tools, so you can really get these things dialed in. So you can see we're sitting right around a thou. As we rotate around, we come back to zero, and then we're at plus two thou on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and jog the machine over. When you're jogging, you want to split the difference. So if you're, if you're seeing a total of two thousands of indicator sweep, you just move it over a thou, and then you should be right on center. So you kind of just keep working them in half at a time to find center. As I mentioned before, um, this is going to show if the hole is actually round or not. You know, so if, if our hole is machined out of round or if the part relaxed as it was, after it was machined and it fell out of tolerance or something, you know, you're going to see it with that indicator. You can see there's a little step in the part right there where it transitions. And if we look at the part, you can see where the toolpath started and stopped on the left side here. So you can see there's a toolpath mark. And if we watch the indicator real close, we'll see the indicator jump. So you can see about a three tenths jump. And that was from the lead in and lead out on the tool path. Um, you know, because the tool pressure changed and as that tool came out, it, it just had different cutting forces. So the size changed by a few tenths. So it's one of those things, you kind of have to decide where you want it. So we can just ignore that point and we can move past it. And we can adjust for that, or if we decide that that's a really important feature that we need to get cleaned up, we can account for it as well. So then once you have your indicator position set where you want it, you come in into PathPilot and you say X0, Y0. And now your machine is exactly positioned on center of that bore. So I hope that you guys find this helpful. Just to kind of quickly summarize what we work through, um, you pick whatever style indicator holder you want to use, you eyeball it on center, you jog it down into the bore and you start measuring and you check your indicator sweep from side to side. I always prefer to start on the x-axis. So if I'm out two thousandths, I move it half that distance back and then I'll find center. Um, we always kind of turn it into a game to see who could find it and do it the fastest always and get it you know, dialed right into zero. So I hope this helped you guys out. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.